of power lines and everything, it's easy to forget about the electricity that runs through our own house all the time. That's very true, Chris. Electricity brings a lot of unseen hazards, both inside of our home and even outside in the yard. That's why we have a few basic rules at our house that we follow. Like this toaster, for example. Have you ever gotten a piece of toast stuck in the toaster before? Yeah, why? Did you try and pry it out, maybe with a knife or a fork? Yeah, I have. Lots of people have, but it's never okay to try and dislodge something with the toaster while it's still energized, especially with the metal utensil. So, if you got a piece of toast stuck in here, what would you do first? You would unplug the toaster. Absolutely. And then once it's unplugged, then it's okay and try and get the toast out of it. Did you know that it only takes a small amount of electricity to cause you harm? I never knew how much it took. Yes, something as simple as coming out of the shower or coming in from the rain and turning on a light switch can cause a small shock to you. So the bottom line is, is that you never want to use appliances when your body is wet or if you're standing in or near water. But what about in the bathroom? Well, let's go check it out. Well, Chris, nowadays most bathrooms are equipped with special safety outlets that are designed to shut off in case of a short. But even so, it's imperative for us to strive to be safe rather than sorry. This means that we use extra caution when using electrical devices, especially those with cords, to keep ourselves away from water. We want to make sure that it's dry and that we're dry before we plug it in, as well as stepping away while we're using it. Oh, I see, so the cord doesn't get in the water. Exactly. That way it's dry while we're using it, and it'll be dry when we go to unplug it. Thanks for having me over, Jamie. Let us talk about electricity. That's no problem, Chris. But there's still one more thing that I wanted to talk about. What don't you notice out here? Uh, there's no power lines. That's right. There's no power lines above ground. And in lots of subdivisions and neighborhoods, just like this, all of the power lines are underground. So that means that we have to use extra caution when doing things like installing a mail post or installing a street light or even installing fencing. So how do you think we check to make sure that there's nothing underground? You have to call 811. Exactly. And what is 811? Call before you dig. Yep. So next time you're out here doing work with your parents, just make sure that you remind them to call call before you dig. That way they can make sure there are no utilities underground. Thanks a lot, Jamie. You're welcome, Chris. Hi, I'm Lydia. Hi, I'm Mike. Hi, Mike. Hi, Keelan. So this is a substation? Yes, it is. And what happens? The electricity comes in over those high voltage lines over there. And it comes in through a transformer, which transforms it down to a lower voltage. And it's sent out through these breakers out into the community to be used. All the substations are similar. They all have pretty much the same equipment and the same layout. Under no circumstances should anybody ever, for any reason, enter a substation. We have signs here to notify people, so never try it. Does stuff like that happen often? Not a lot, but there was a circumstance where a little girl was playing hide and go seek with her friends and she got into a transformer and she was electrocuted. You've both seen those transformers in your neighborhood. They're in boxes, it looks like a cabinet. Those are transformers and those are used to supply underground electricity to the communities instead of using the overhead utility poles. Somehow the young girl got into the transformer and as soon as she made contact with the electrical equipment, she was electrocuted. Mike, I have to ask, if all this stuff is so dangerous, then why do they keep transformer boxes around neighborhoods? They're safe unless somebody damages them or breaks the locks and enters them. There's people of all ages that do a lot of dangerously unsafe things around electricity. And as you know, there's no second chance with electricity. I understand you guys have an appointment at the Accident Training Center. Take Thanks, care. Thanks, Mike. All right, Thank take care. What's going on here? Uh, this is a training exercise for emergency personnel and responders such as police and fire rescue. And to teach them how to uh, assist in the emergency involving electricity. This is Officer uh, Ken O'Brien from uh, Newington Police Department. Okay, in this scenario, a uh, vehicle lost control and hit a telephone pole. The impact was so hard that it caused a power line to come down. You can see it lying across the car. Yeah, I can see it, but how come no one's doing anything? Well, we are doing things. First, we call the power company, let them know there's been an accident involving down lines. They've just arrived and they'll turn the power off to the line so that the power lines can be removed from the car. The power company? I thought that was your guys' job. Uh, no, it really isn't. That's because down power lines can radiate power in all directions through the ground. So are you telling me, just by walking over there on that road, that I could get electrocuted? Exactly. When the wires are down on the car, we have to still consider them live which means they still have electricity through. But electricity is invisible, so we don't actually know if it's there or not. That's correct. 
And because it's so fast, we should not think that we could outrun it. That's correct. There's another thing you should remember also. Can you remember what it is? Oh yeah, that wire is not insulated. That's only a black protective coating. And because the wire is touching the ground, anything could be electrified. The car, the ground, or the guardrail. That's right. A lot of people just think that the end is the dangerous part, like a hose, which is incorrect. If that wire is down on the car, assume that the car and everything it's touching is energized. But what about the people in the car? The car is touching the ground, and the people are touching the car because they're sitting inside it. Here's the thing. You must stay in the car until somebody from the power company comes and tells you it's okay to get out. But if for any reason your car catches on fire or there's an impending emergency and you have to get out of the car, there's a special procedure you have to know to do that correctly. In order to exit the vehicle safely, follow this procedure. Open the door and without touching any part of the vehicle's exterior, step or hop out of the car with both feet together, touching the ground at the same time then immediately shuffle or hop away from the vehicle in a straight line. I sometimes instruct people to keep their arms and hands close to the body during this procedure. And this procedure goes for any type of vehicle, including your school bus. The bottom line is, if you can stay in the car, it's the safest place to be. Remember, anytime you see or are involved in an accident with a car and electricity, call 911 right away and tell them to call the power company to help you. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank you so much, guys. We really learned a lot today. Hi, right, you're welcome. You're welcome. Good job on that web, so. Yeah, Mike would be proud. I just hope all those kids learned a lot. Yep. Look at them.